So just for the sake of gigs and shittles and the fact that other people have been asking about some stuff on the Solval Facebook group, I took the back cover off of this display unit, and this is actually an integrated unit right here. This is a screen and what appears to be, it's called the clip pad, but it's basically an MKS Pi with a screen built in. And this kind of signifies a couple of things to me. One, it signifies that this may run off of the standard MKS Pi Armbian distro, which I'm going to try. I'm going to try to find out right now. I'm going to put the EMMC module from one of my MKS Pis into here and see if it actually does something and see if it comes back to life. But this also signifies to me that I should be able to run this as the third printer on my BTT Pad 7 which eh, you, you buy the thing, you expect it, you know, you want it to, to do stuff, but apparently there's some issues with this distribution of Linux and Clipper to where you can't even do any updates on this thing, like at all. And there's no, there's no turning back if you bork this thing up. There's, there's no firmware available for download on the Solval site from what I understand. I haven't tried, I haven't tried. But looking at this, I mean, I, I, this is commonplace. This is an RK3328. It's got the one gig of RAM right here. It's got the big old fatty capacitors like the main board on the Neptune 4 has. It's even got a fan port here. So they know that this thing is going to run warm. I had this thing running yesterday and it runs about eh, 70. It's hot. <laughs> this thing runs hot. Just like every other 3328, this thing runs hot. And that is detrimental because much like the MKS Pi and much like we are going to see in the field, the even the, even the Libre Renegade. I'm sorry, Libre, but you're not immune to this either. These RK3328 processors are, are they're just dog shit for 3D printers. They, they, they don't run Clipper very well after a while. They start to degrade and then they start experiencing chronic MCU shutdowns and it may have to be because of the temperature or it may just be piss poor design in the architecture who knows on paper they sound great but I, I I see otherwise I've seen otherwise so right now I just wanted to give an overview shot of what's going on here and I'm going to try a couple of things while I've got this thing before you know, if, if I should have to send it back I don't want to really bork anything too much but there, there's a possibility that I can just remote run this off of my Pad 7 and forego the dreaded MKS clip pad. But we'll see. And now I've got it running on the standard MKS Pi Armbian distro with a, a couple of caveats. Uh, I had to use the ComeFast Wi-Fi adapter because the onboard Wi-Fi didn't come up. And... The USB 2.0 port seemed to work, but I plugged the printer USB into the USB 3.0 and it didn't seem to come up. So I mean, I'm sure somebody that is a little bit more well-versed in Linux could uh, actually get this thing running. But this is more me playing around just to see what I could do with this, what kind of limits I can push. But as it stands, if you're not able to get any kind of support from Sovel. If you can't get a Sovel image, you could at least use your machine with the standard MKS Pi Linux distro as long as you've got the way to burn the EMMC chip, which I do because I've got a couple of these things just laying around. But I wouldn't say that this is for somebody that <laughs> doesn't know what they're doing. So if anybody's, uh, if anybody knows how to poke and prod around through system device trees and stuff like that to see if we can get the onboard Wi-Fi working again and the USB 3.0. Let me know in the comments because I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing where we could go with this. But quite frankly, I, I don't even plan on using all of this stuff. I'm going to put the original EMMC back in, put the original screen back together. But if I wanted to, I have choices. Well, the one thing that I do like about the SVO7 is that it is Pad 7 friendly. 
a couple of minor tweaks to the CFG file, and it came right up. So that's uh, that's a good sign. So even if I didn't want to use the touchscreen that came with it, I could run this as a third printer on my Pad 7, or I could swap over to a BTT Pi or Pi 4B, something like that, because the further away I can get from maker-based products, the better off I am. Okay, so I did manage to get the SV07 up and running without any of the modifications that I had to make the last time I was playing around with this, but I wanted to go over the steps that I had to go through in order to get to that point. So I've already gone ahead and SSH'd into the device. So now the important thing is that you've already installed the Kaya script, and I've got multiple instances running on my Pad 7. I've got three printers set up in multiple instances. And the easiest way to do that is to install the Kaya script. So if you need to install it, go through my older videos, go through the CB1 video, go through the BTT Pi video, go through the installing Clipper the Easy Way video, and to an extent, go through the Pad 7 video. Any one of those videos should show you how to get the Kaya script installed. Hell, even the Innovato Quadra video goes through it. So we run the Kaya script, and it's going to ask you if you want to update it. So just hit Y for yes hit enter, and then press the cursor up key to reload the CLI buffer, hit enter, and it'll rerun the Kaya script. It'll open up just like you see here. If we go into number four, the advanced options, you'll see right here under extras, there's a G code shell command add-in that you want to install. So just type eight, hit enter, and it will install a G code shell command. I've already done it, so I don't want to go through it again. It only takes a couple seconds, but it's there. You go through that, you hit eight, enter, it installs it, you hit back. From there, you just quit, and that's it. Once you are done with that, then what you'll do is, just like any other Clipper install, you're going to take the printer CFG from the SV07's original MKS Pi screen, copy that to your computer, paste it into your Clipper configuration inside of your new device, and what you'll also have to do is, you'll see right here, there's this plr.cfg. Now, this is the CFG file that handles a power loss recovery, but it also handles a bunch of other G-code macros that are inside of here. And the things that I had to comment out were pertaining to this CFG file right here, this G-code shell command. And there was a couple other ones that were running without the shell command add-on, and I had to comment those out. But now that I've got the add-in installed, I don't have to comment that stuff out anymore. Really, the only thing I have to do is just figure out which serial device I'm connected to or which serial port that I'm connected to. When you're doing multiple instances, you'll want to do the dev serial by path as opposed to dev serial by ID because by path is going to give you the exact USB port that each printer is plugged into. So right now I'm plugged into port 1.2. That's on the back side of the pad 7. That's the top port. The one underneath it is dot 3, and the one on the side is dot 4. But now I did say that there were a couple other steps you had to go through, and that involves opening up WinSCP. And you can see that there's so many similarities between distros that it basically becomes old hat after a while. Now, your mileage may vary, but on my build, because I've got three printers, I've got Neptune 2, Neptune 3, and then just generic printer 3. Under my printer 3, which is the SV07's printer configuration, you'll see that on the main directory of printer 3 underscore data, and if you have a single instance, it's just going to be printer underscore data, I have a couple of files. I have plr.sh, and I have clear underscore plr.sh. These are two files that come off of the MKS Pi that you'll have to put inside of this directory. Under the config folder, you'll see I have printer CFG and I have PLR CFG. If I open up PLR.CFG, at the very top here, this command sh slash, right now I have it set to home BQ printer three underscore data clear PLR. And it's going to be set to slash home slash MKS slash printer underscore data slash clear PLR or something like that. So you're going to have to just point the CFG file to where that file is located. Same thing with this G code command down here. I have to change this to home slash BQ slash printer three underscore data PLR dot SH. I'll save that. 
and that's pretty much it. As long as you have the printer CFG and the PLR CFG inside of the config folder, and you have the PLR.sh and the clear PLR.sh files inside of wherever you've pointed it to, this should all be what you need to get this thing running without any kind of major changes. And the benefit to this is that even though I haven't tried it yet, more than likely this will allow you to maintain power loss recovery because that's what all this PLR stuff is for. So if I double check the PLR.CFG, we can see right here that I've got it set to home BQ printer three dot data. And up here I've got home BQ printer three data. If I hit save and restart, it all comes up happy. The printer is now ready to run. So I would say that for the most part, the SVO7 is a great solution. If you have any kind of inkling that you may want to venture away from the stock hardware and you want to maintain using Clipper, but you want to use a different type of device. So case in point, going back to, again, with the Elegoo stuff, if you were to get an Elegoo Neptune 4, the Elegoo Neptune 4 has an integrated MCU and Linux device. It's more like an MKS skipper board rather than a standalone MCU and a Pi device, or a standalone Linux device, rather. And that's a little bit detrimental in the case of if you ever wanted to try to run it off of a different type of Linux device, you can't circumvent the Linux system that's already on there. There's no direct USB access or direct serial type access to the MCU side, other than what I could only assume would be what the UART pins or the UART display is connecting to. I'm not sure what the architecture is on the Neptune 4, but I do know that the screen that they're using is a serial UART device such as a NextGen HMI or a DWIN HMI, where you develop the HMI on a standalone system and then just communicate with the device via serial UART commands. So that's the only way that I can see of being able to connect to the MCU side would be via the TX and RX on the serial UART because there's no HDMI port or any kind of display output on the Linux side to speak of. So you can't connect a wired clipper screen to that board. You can run it off of a wireless device. You can get an Android tablet or an Android phone and install clipper screen on that and then communicate with it via Wi-Fi or you can use Mobile Raker, but I, I, I digress. But with this machine, you have the option of disconnecting the screen, plugging in a different screen, and everything's hunky-dory. You're, you're back up to the races in a couple of clicks and a few file transfers. So for me personally... I kind of would gravitate towards a machine that allows me to do that only because now I've got home base on a single device and I don't have to tap dance between different screens and different Linux distros and different versions of firmware. I don't have to worry that the SVO7 is running an older version of Clipper and it won't let me upgrade it. And I'm using the latest version of Clipper on my Neptune printers. And so now I'm I'm pretty happy with the fact that I've got this homogenous thing going between the three printers. So that'll about wrap it up for this one. As I always say, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And if you got a buddy that's interested in this kind of stuff, share it with your friend because sharing is caring. Stay tuned for some more videos on my Anycubic Chiron build. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.